I walked out to the bounds. Birds tweeted. The sun shone warmly. It was a nice, it was nice in Camelot, but Fred was right. We had to get out of the Middle Ages before we went twentieth century crazy. Sam crouched behind the plate. Hub it, Joe. I wound up and fired my fast, my best fastball down the middle. Fred swung his oak bat and crushed it. The leather ball cleared the wall, still rising, going, going, and then it disappeared through one of the windows in the in the dark tower. We heard a cr crash of breaking glass. Three quick explosions rocked the tower. Red, blue, and yellow flames spit out the towers. The flames circled the towers, formed a cloud, and rained purple snakes, white stars, red dragons, and hundreds of different weird glowing shapes that dissolved as they hit the ground. Magic! Sam gasped. Who dares disturb my work? Boomed a voice that filled the air. Merlin! Gasped the stable voice as they were, and they were gone. Ob, obne uber subin ubin. Boomed the voice again. Show yourself, demons of destruction, and feel the wrath of Merlin. That freaky cloud began to disappear. Fred, Sam, and I looked at each other. We knew instantly what we had to do. We ran. Chapter 9 Fred, Sam, and I knelt before King Arthur in the Great Hall. We couldn't get... He couldn't get us home, so he figured the least he could do was make us knights of the round table. King Arthur tapped each of us on the shoulders with uh, that flat sword of his. Expelliarch! Queen um, Excalibur. Queen Guinevere and the knights looked on. I, he I hereby dub thee Knights of the Round Table. Rise, Sir Fred the Awesome. Rise, Sir Sam the Unusual. Rise, Sir Joe the Magnificent. The assembled knights raised their swords and cheered. Bring our newest knights their armor. Three squires st stra staggered, staggered. Forward, loaded with swords, shields, and a coat of mail for each of us. Fred's eyes lit up. Armor! Swords! This Middle Ages stuff might be okay after all! Then Merlin appeared. He was wearing his robe, whispering in the King, King Arthur's ears, holding up our leather ball. We're sunk now, said Sam. He's history, said Fred. If he even comes near us, I'll run him through with my new sword. Don't say anything, I said. P Pretend you've never heard of baseball. King Arthur nodded. Merlin shuffled up and looked us over with piercing green eyes once more. Eerie, since you enchanters arrived, he said. I couldn't but think you were of a time and place I had not seen before. Nope, we have never heard of baseball before either, said Fred. Sam groaned. <sighs> you dimwit, why don't you just throw us in the dungeon yourself? Shut up for a minute, you guys. Let Mr. Merlin talk. He was, or is, one of the greatest magicians who ever lived. Merlin bowed his thanks to be continued. 
when this layer leather sphere magically appeared to me this afternoon. I remembered this sphere appearing in a very old strange book. Even I know not whence this book came. Perhaps you know something of its secrets. And with that, Merlin pronounced produced from his robe a thin blue book. A book such a such a dark dark blue that it looked black like the sky at night. It had gold stars and moons along the edge and twisting silver designs on the front and back that looked like writing from a long time ago. Before any of us could say a word, Merlin opened the book to a picture of three guys sitting around a kitchen table looking at a baseball. A familiar pale green mist began to swirl around the feet of Merlin, King Arthur, and Queen Guinevere. Everyone oohed and awed, thinking it was another magic trick. Merlin smiled. The mist rose, covering all. Chapter 10 And Joseph Arthur, you can just march right outside with that smoke bomb and smoke yourself silly with these stupid magic tricks because I have had enough. Do you hear me? The mist melted slow. The mist slowly melted. We were sitting back at the kitchen table as if nothing as if we had never left. Bob scooped up an armful of wrapping paper and stormed down at the room muttering, Joe the Magnificent, my foot. <clears throat> Joe the Brainless is more like it. Joe the Totally Irresponsible. A fog machine disguised as a book? Why, there ought to be a law. What kind of a gift is that to give a you, young boy? Neither Fred nor Sam nor I moved a muscle. No one made a sound until I said, Merlin? Black Knight, answered Fred. Flea on its bag, said Sam. The three of us looked at each other. We looked at the book in my hand, the baseball on the table, then back at each other. Fred shook his head. No way. That stuff couldn't have been for real. I'm not so sure, said Sam, wiping the last of the mist off his green glass off of his glasses. I wasn't so sure myself. Then I put my hand in my pocket. I felt something and pulled it out. It was a card. A card from the an old deck with all sorts of crazy pictures in it. I held it up. Queen Guinevere's magician card. I said, said Sam. Joe, promise us you're not going to wish for anything again, said Fred. I looked carefully at the twisting silver designs and the patterned and gold stars and moons on the light blue book. For a split second, it seemed like it really, like I really could read what they said. I won't, I promised. Well, at least not until I've read the book. The end. So that's the end of the first book in the Time Warp Trio series. Like I said, I have the two other books out of the library, and I'll be doing dramatic readings for them, too. Um, and so, yeah, the next book in the series is The Not-So-Jolly Roger, and, that, and I'll be reading that next. So, I hope you enjoyed this dramatic reading of The Knights of the Kitchen Table, and if you would like to um, read this for yourself, then go check out your local library and see if you can track down a copy, because it's a really good book, and it's really short, but fun to read. And I really enjoyed doing this dramatic reading, and I hope you enjoyed watching it, because it was fun. So I will see you next time when we read The Not-So-Jolly Roger.